Our next technique that I'm going to demonstrate is the cloud technique. More people ask for this demonstration than any other technique because it's so popular. Now in order to do this, you'll need to roll a base coat of a satin finished blue paint on your surface before you begin. Also, you'll want to work with a pure white paint as well as a pale gray color paint. From there, keep watching the video and we'll teach you how to make a glaze from these paint colors. In order to create your glazes, what I've done here is I've created a white glaze and a gray glaze and that we'll be using to create the clouds. How I did that was I combined four cups using a measuring cup, combined four cups of glazing liquid with one cup paint, stirred it together and I've created a glaze, again, for both the white paint and the gray paint. Well now we've done our prep work getting ready to do the cloud technique. We've rolled our set and finished blue base coat, we've mixed our glazes, we've got our tools here so we're ready to roll. The first thing we're going to do is take our small brush, dip it into our white glaze. And I like to start at the top portion of the wall and I'm going to create kind of a jagged scallop here to the surface with the white glaze. Then I'm going to take my other chip brush, dip it into my gray glaze, and apply kind of another scallop. I think that the best way or formation that you should apply these glazes is kind of almost shaped like an eye, where it's thicker in the middle and points out a little bit more towards the edges. Then I'm going to take the little woolly, and I'm going to begin with the top portion of the white glaze, and I'm going to kind of tap through it and jab the glaze so that the top portion of the glaze gets real ripply and kind of jagged looking, like so. And the glaze goes a long way, so it's actually going to spread out. Then I'm going to take it, tap it out through the middle, and blend it in the same way with the gray glaze. Now, as we begin building the, the clouds up, that's when they really start coming to life. Now that's why I started at the top portion, because I like to overlap them right directly on top of each other. And this is done by applying again your white glaze and then a little bit of your gray glaze, taking the little woolly, tapping and jabbing, mixing in the gray, and spreading them out. Again, building them up. And I tend to do them a little bit more in clusters than kind of randomly individual clouds. Sometimes I'll do two together, sometimes I'll do three together, and occasionally I'll do one large one. Now this is really a very easy process. Just don't overthink it or overwork it. Just blend it out because when it really comes to life, again as I said before, is after you build them up and stand, it, stand back and take in the whole picture. Now occasionally what I like to do, I've talked about clusters of maybe two or three. Every once in a while I like to just do a little stray one. Just a little white and mist it out because every once in a while you see a little one. Now a lot of kids like to do this technique in their room and kids are actually the best at doing clouds, again, because they really don't overthink it. They just do it. Now people sometimes ask, well, why, why would you want it to have white glaze on the top and gray glaze down below? If you look at a cloud at a particular time of year, the sun is actually shining down on the top portion and creating a shadow on the lower portion of the cloud. And that's why you actually see a white on top and a gray down below. I'm actually going to add a little bit more of the white and make a bigger cloud. Then I'll take the little woolly again. Again, a key here is making it really jagged. And if you remember, I like to have the clouds shaped more like an eye. Uh, sometimes people make them kind of more in circles on the wall. And I think when you're doing it on the wall, that this is probably the most realistic way of doing it. After you blend it out again, if you, if you feel that you have too much gray or too much white, you can add a little bit more glaze and blend it in. Now 
Now, this look is fantastic for creating on walls, but a really often asked question is, what if I'm painting on ceilings? Do I want to create that type, same type of cloud? My answer to that question is, I actually do like to create this illusion on a ceiling. I think it's the easiest and the fastest look, but if you choose to have more of a random overhead look, I'd like to show you exactly how. To answer the ever so commonly asked questions, what do I do with clouds on the ceiling? And as I mentioned before, I really like doing them as we did them on the wall. But if you want a little bit more realistic overall look, then you can go ahead and apply your, your clouds like I'm going to. I'm going to begin with my small brush and my white glaze and just kind of begin creating some random scallops like so. Then I'm going to take my little woolly. Now I have not added the gray yet, but I'm going to go ahead and create these clouds. Now if you notice, I, I am kind of creating almost a circle here. And I'm actually going to complete the circle with the white glaze. Now it's okay if you get some stray legs going on that, if maybe they jaunt off here and there. Now when, if you'll notice and take a good look at this, what I've done is I've left a lot of the blue areas open still. And what I'm going to do with, the, with those points is actually use the gray glaze, but I'm going to use a very small portion of it. And again, randomly just kind of blotted on there. Taking the little woolly and tapping those out randomly. And all you're doing is you're not really creating a, an undertone or a shadow like we did on the other clouds. This is a hidden shadow just to create depth. You really shouldn't see a lot of the gray until you let it dry and stand back and really take it in. You shouldn't notice that the gray's there, just it will be there. So that's our fabulous cloud technique. Remember, the most important key to your success with this is to have fun creating them.